Greetings, this is Matt Fiello, Technical Marketing Engineer with the Cisco Compute BU, and we're back with another IMM Expert Series video. Um, this time around, we're going to be doing the uh, server policy videos. Uh, today's video will be on the bias policy specifically. Um, it's going to be the same format. We're going to um, discuss several slides, uh, and then follow that up with a short demonstration. And uh, with that, let's uh, get to it. Now, I wanted to have a quick introduction here to the server policy. So I'm in Intersight here, Infrastructure Service, and I've gone down to Policies and uh, UCS Server Policies. Now, there's 38 total policies as we comment now. Okay, this can grow um, as we add new features and functionality to Intersight. But as it stands right now, there's 38 total server policies. Now, in this view here, we've highlighted uh, nine of these policies. Now, these policies highlighted only apply to like standalone C-series servers, and some of these also apply to the domain, and you saw these in the domain policy uh, series of videos. So we're not going to focus on these nine uh, highlighted policies because we're talking about intersight managed mode. So that means FI attacks, either compute blades, okay, or C series servers that are integrated through the FI. So again, uh, as you can see with the highlighted policy here, we are going to focus on the bias policy uh, for this video. Okay, the bias policy has several different roles, um, but its primary role um, is to help load the operating system and to manage uh, the communications between the OS and the, the server's hardware devices themselves. Specifically speaking about the bias, um, there are four major functionalities. And the first one is the power on self-test, the post. Um, that kind of takes uh, a long time uh, for server boot up, uh, and that's a necessary thing because we're testing, we're testing the health of the hardware uh, before loading the operating system. The second major functionality is the actual loader, the bootstrap loader. So it locates the operating system uh, and prepares for loading the operating system. Okay, so the third major functionality is uh, your software and drivers. So this locates the software and drivers that interface with that operating system once it's running. And then finally, the fourth uh, major functionality is the CMOS setup, okay? So this is a configuration program um, that allows uh, our users of our servers to alter the, the hardware and system settings. So this is basically the crux of what our bias policy does. The bias policy facilitates you making configuration setting changes, you know, be it memory performance, be it uh, CPU performance, be it power, um, and be able to alter those settings uh, based on your needs uh, for the, the IMM based servers. Okay, is the policy policy required? Now, this, this takes some context. So, uh, in as much as you're just trying to get the server profile to associate down to the server, no, uh, you don't absolutely have to have a bias policy. The, the server profile will associate down perfectly fine. However, okay, you're going to want to have a bias policy. Okay, you're going to want to configure um, those CMOS settings, okay, so that you can get the performance that you intend out of your server. Uh, at the very least, create a policy which will have the default settings, uh, the default tokens, and, and include that with your, uh, your server profile. Now, as far as recommendations are concerned for the bias policy, it is very much dictated uh, by the use case of the server. At the very least, uh, you're gonna wanna be aware of what the default settings for those tokens are, uh, and then alter. So for the volume of tokens out there, and there's uh, you know, better part of 150 plus tokens out there, um, you know, 99% you're probably going to keep as the defaults and you're going to alternate the onesie twosies uh, of those tokens accordingly. 
Um, we do have a bias token guide out there and I'll post these URLs in the comments uh, section so they're easier for you to, to navigate to. Um, currently, this uh, document is going under review uh, to add in uh, guidance for the M7 server series tokens. So if you're watching this video soon after posting, expect that within the next few weeks. Uh, for others that uh, consume uh, this uh, after that time frame, then uh, if you go to this URL, you'll see the, uh, the M7 tokens. Also, there is a special performance tuning best practice guide for M7 platforms, and I'll post that URL as well. Now, as far as uh, providing any kind of guidance with CLI verification, uh, that's kind of hard to do right now. Uh, with Intersight, uh, you would have to have elevated privileges through TAC uh, to be able to do that. We understand that's a that's a problem, and we're going to address that going forward um, to give you more exposure to verify on the endpoint uh, what your desired state is. So you got the desired state in the policy in the server profile. You deploy the server profile, uh, and then you want to be able to verify at the endpoint. So we got some work to do on that. Um, bear in mind, uh, this policy does require an activation. Okay, so if you deploy the policy down, we don't automatically reboot servers, but you'll have the option to go ahead and reboot uh, selectively. Okay, or you can stage the change down and then later reboot uh, to activate the policy change. Okay, so, so with that, um, probably your best bet, okay, is to use the BIOS uh, setup in the operating system like pressing F2 for Windows boot uh, to verify uh, thereafter, after activation, after a reboot, verify that the change did in fact take place. As with all IMM expert series videos, I like to include a graphic here to show where the policy is as far as its association with the server profile template. Now, this is a direct attached policy to the template, so there's nothing embedded here. Um, so it makes it easy as we get into other video discussions, other policy discussions. You'll see that on the screen here that some are, in fact, uh, em embedded policies. So we'll call that out. Okay, so moving on with the demonstration, uh, here we are in Intersight, specifically infrastructure services. Uh, we're going down to our policies and we're going to create a policy. We're going to filter down on UCS server policies and then grab the bias policy. Click start, give it a meaningful name. Click next. And as you can see, you get a warning here that uh, these settings will only be applied on a host reboot. So you have the option when you deploy the server profile of rebooting the server immediately, um, or you can simply push this, the change down, stage it, okay, and then wait whatever, an hour or two um, for your maintenance window to actually reboot the server or allow the ultimate user of that server to reboot the server uh, at his or her leisure. So that's, that's purely your internal process. But we're gonna pick uh, UCS server FI attached because we are talking about IMM policies. And uh, as you can see, as you can expand out uh, all these different uh, categories, you have all your different tokens and that's where that documentation comes in. It helps you understand what exactly a default is um, for a given platform, for instance, processor. Uh, any of these tokens here are gonna have platform default, meaning um, you can use this policy, uh, uh, deploy it down to the server, and then based on what type of server it is, uh, the model, the PID, uh, the appropriate token setting will be applied. Okay, so you have, uh, um, some reuse there of a given bias policy. And then once you've made your changes or if you just accept what is default, click create. And now you have your, uh, your bias policy which you can attach to your server profile template. That completes our 
IMM expert series bias server policy video. Uh, I hope you were able to pick up a, a few pieces of information with this. Um, stay tuned for more IMM expert series videos, specifically uh, talking about IMM server policies. Thank you.